Hello and welcome to the 21st Annual John D. Spellman Awards for Achievement in Historic Preservation. I'm Jennifer Meisner with King County's Historic Preservation Program, and each year we look forward to recognizing exceptional work being done around the county to share stories of our past, bring new life to historic buildings, and revitalize our communities. This is the second year we are bringing you our awards program virtually, and I hope you are as inspired by the extraordinary people and projects being honored in the video segments you are about to see. These awards are named for John D. Spellman, who served as King County's first executive and then went on to serve as governor of Washington State. During his term as King County executive, Governor Spellman laid the foundation for preservation in King County by initiating the first countywide survey of historic resources, passage of the King County Landmarks Ordinance, and creation of the King County Landmarks Commission. As we celebrate accomplishments in historic preservation each year, we continue to honor the rich legacy of John D. Spellman. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a true preservation champion, King County Executive Dow Constantine, who will present this year's John D. Spellman Awards. Longstanding local businesses play a vital role in maintaining the cultural identity and heritage of a community. They serve a function that goes beyond the simple sale of goods and services. They provide a sense of continuity in our rapidly changing society and comfort to community members who know this is a business they can depend on. The 2021 John D. Spellman Award for Legacy Business goes to Eileen and Gordon Walcott, owners and operators of the historic Vashon Theater. Vashon Theater was built in 1947 and it's been a staple of the community ever since. Welcome to Vashon Theater, home on Vashon Island. I just love this theater. First run movies are great. Live music sometimes, the Oscar night documentaries, speakers. I mean, this is a center of community. I've watched kids grow up, have birthday parties here, come back and be my employees, leave, go to college, get careers, and then show up with their families. It's amazing what can happen in 18 years. Yeah, it's wonderful. My parents took over when I I think I was 12 years old. One of my first jobs was stocking candy. That was a great, great gig. I wish that was still my only responsibilities for the theater. <laughs> Thankfully, Jake is still here working with me. So that's been kind of a cool experience as well. The Legacy Business Award kind of recognizes the community basis of a lot of preservation work. The business owners, the property owners, the community partners who are preserving these places, keeping them alive, keeping them going. When I bought the theater, there was such a big puddle in the front. We floated ducks in it so people noticed that it was underwater right there and didn't step into it. Um, that's changed. We've got new floors, we've got new chairs. Modern sound system, everything that we're working on is to have a modern experience inside of a 1947 building. It's been a long journey, let me just say that. What you really notice outside, I think, is the streamlined modern style that was in the 30s and 40s really popular, and it's, it's very much connected to like Hollywood and broadcasting and TV and radio. And I just, I love the look of it, um, and I love coming to movies here. So our popcorn machine is actually from World War II that's made with wood around it instead of metal. The, all the metal was going to airplanes and things that were needed for the war. I think there's only three of them out there. In the industry, they have a term called a theater angel, and that's my mom. It's somebody who cares about the building and the whole idea more than anybody else, and they're gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that it stays here and that it gets pushed into the future as far as it can go. I didn't know it at the time when we bought the theater, but I would never wanna own a theater anywhere else. This community's an exceptional place with amazing people. We're just a small, small thing going on in our little place over here and uh, loving being that way.
The Angerer Farm Hay Barn Complex is the historic core of the 193-acre Jubilee Farm located in the Snoqualmie River Valley just a few miles south of Carnation. Historic features of this property include a 1957 hay barn, a 1962 loafing shed, and a machine shed, all reflecting broad changes in agricultural practices following World War II. In 1989, Eric and Paula Hawkinson purchased the 106-acre Angerer Dairy Farm, renaming it the Jubilee Farm. Jubilee Farm now operates as a biodynamic farm, generating its own fertility through composting, animals, cover cropping, and crop rotation. It offers a wide range of nutritious vegetables, fruit, meats, and flour milled on site and available on open market days at the farm. Family-oriented events are hosted throughout the year, including the ever-popular Harvest and Pumpkin Tours and the Holiday Mercantile, which is held in Pete Ongerer's 1957 Hay Barn, the beloved heart of this farm. Our heartfelt thanks to the Hawkinsons for their stewardship and innovative farming operation, which is keeping this historic farmstead a commercially viable and well-loved community resource. The John D. Spellman Award for Adaptive Reuse recognizes exemplary projects that infuse new life into historic buildings by repurposing them for new modern uses while retaining their unique and authentic characteristics. The 2021 John D. Spellman Adaptive Reuse Award goes to Craig Glazier and the Volition Brewing Team, Lucas and Jamie Haynes, Matthew Sherman, and Ayla Lukasik in recognition of their outstanding rehabilitation of the Glacier's Dry Goods Store for new use as Volition Brewing and for their ambitious vision to advance community revitalization in downtown North Bend. There are people that are in town today that can remember coming to the store every fall to buy their back to school clothes. This was a, a destination at one time, it's still a destination, but it's a new form of destination. We are in the smack dab of the heart of historic downtown North Bend. So this building was actually the Glacier Dry Goods Store starting in the 1920s. The four owners of Volition got a hold of me and said, hey, we've got a vision for this. We were able to move into this location, breathe new life into it, and create a, a new community hub in a different way. Our bar top is made with reclaimed wood from the original building when we ripped the floor joists out that still have the saw marks in it from the local sawmill that used to be here. Retaining the recessed entryways is something you don't see in modern buildings. A Star Wars reference came up. I asked them, are you guys Star Wars fans? And they said, absolutely, we're Star Wars fans. And I told them I had a life-size Han Solo frozen in carbonite. How about we stick it in the brewery because my wife won't let me put it in the house. Of course, the response is absolutely. And lo and behold, we designed the area for it. Uh, over here in what we kind of like to call the Solo Lounge. It will be there long beyond my lifetime. <laughs> I mean, it, it feels like cheers sometimes, and so you just come down and you end up in a fantastic conversation with somebody you've already met 10 times or someone you just met that night, and uh, it's, it's all too easy to end up down here. The waistline doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> the work done here means buildings in the neighborhood are also going to be promoted and, and feel the ripple effect in a positive way that what happened here is a model that can happen in other buildings. Coots Garage was built in 1923 to serve the increasing automobile travel through Issaquah on the newly paved section of the Sunset Highway, the state's east-west route over the Cascade Mountains connecting Seattle to Spokane. Coots Garage was built just outside the city limits along Mill Street, now known as Sunset Way, with a collection of other auto-related service stations and businesses. Recognizing the commercial potential of catering to the influx of automobile travelers, Cornelius Coots built his triangle-shaped masonry garage 
to lease as a service station. Tibbetts Motor Company, Issaquah Tire and Service Company, the Issaquah Service Station, and the Sunset Garage all operated out of Coots Garage at various times between 1924 and 1937. Later, the building was renovated for use as an auto supply store and various commercial businesses until eventually being transformed again into a restaurant space, hosting first the Issaquah Brew House and then the popular Rogue Ale House for many years. Our congratulations and appreciation to Aubrey Aramaki for his ongoing efforts to maintain this early commercial building, which continues to contribute to the vitality of Issaquah's downtown. The Fall City Hopshed is significant for its association with the early settlement history and agricultural development of Fall City and the Snoqualmie Valley. Serving as a hops drying kiln from the late 1880s to the early 1900s, this simple vernacular structure is a valuable remnant of the region's dramatic agricultural expansion during the hops craze of the late 1870s through the early 1890s. First nominated as a landmark nearly 40 years ago, the Fall City Hopshed nomination was revised and expanded in 2021 as part of a project to update older nominations that failed to tell the full story of the property. The original landmark nomination was missing key information about the former Snoqualmie Tribe Village site on which the Hopshed sits, as well as the history of significant immigrant Chinese and tribal member participation in the 1880s to 90s hop craze. Hop production was a labor-intensive enterprise that drew a seasonal mix of Native American, white, and Chinese workers. Entire families worked the hop picking season with specific jobs for men, women, and children. Workers arrived before the harvest, registered at the trading post, and set up camp in assigned locations according to their ethnic and tribal affiliations. The Fall City Hopshed is a remarkably rare intact structure of its type, one of the very few remaining kilns from the period during which hops cultivation briefly dominated Western Washington agriculture in the late 19th century. Special thanks to Jamie Merriman Cohen and Sarah Steen for updating this nomination to tell a fuller, more inclusive story, and to the Fall City Historical Society for their support. The John D. Spellman Volunteer Service Award is presented to an individual whose commitment to advancing public understanding of our cultural heritage has made a lasting impact on our community. Archaeologist Laura Lee Hudson has spent more than three decades identifying and protecting cultural artifacts in our region, interpreting the history they represent, and volunteering her time and expertise to local historical organizations and the King County Landmarks Commission. I am delighted to present a 2021 John D. Spellman Award for Volunteer Service to Laura Lee Hudson for her leadership, her mentorship, and her public service to the people of King County. Yeah, I worked for the Bureau of Land Management for two summers and the guys there thought it was really funny. They got me a t-shirt that said, is it an artifact or is it trash? And <laughs> artifacts are people's trash for the most part. There's a little bottle here. Oh, swamp root, nice. Really popular in the late 1800s. Laura Lee has dedicated her life to archeology span and really our uh, local and regional history. My thing about artifacts is that's not the story. It helps tell the story. The story is how, where that artifact was found, you know, what's their relationship to each other. That's the important part. It's the story that it tells. I just have really learned so much from her about all of the pieces that make our environment and all of the people that have lived on the land. Big projects we worked on, of course, was the Alaskan Moy Viaduct before they decided to do the tunnel. These are collections of Asian ceramics. These artifacts came from down in what's now Soto. That's what's interesting is you get to learn so much about different people and how like, the city of Seattle and how it was built and the different communities that were in here. Strong ethnic communities that are still here and they were here early on. So I work with the Neely Mansion. 
We had a Japanese bathhouse there from a Japanese family that lived there prior to the war. It was an opportunity to do a project with the community. Anybody who wanted to come, kids, adults, that was a lot of fun. When we do archaeological work, this is where our pieces end up. It's in a bag, marked appropriately, you know, where they were found, when they were found, who found them. There's a lot of material in this museum here that people could use to tell better stories. Being able to look back and see all the things that people use for everyday living is really fascinating. Every time I put something in the trash now, I think about, you know, what are people going to learn from us in the future? Archaeology is able to broaden our understanding of ourselves because I think people are interested in their communities and in the history. They like to kind of be tied in to that. If we didn't have people before us, we wouldn't be where we are. The W.D. Gibbon General Store was built in 1894 alongside the new Columbia and Puget Sound Railroad, which was transforming the Cedar River Valley as industry made its way into the resource-rich hills of southern King County. Used as a general store from 1894 to 1959, it is one of the oldest surviving commercial buildings in the Maple Valley area. The Gibbon General Store is an excellent example of the Western False Front building type, commonly associated with late 19th and early 20th century settlement of the American West. In 1991, the building was donated to the Maple Valley Historical Society, which relocated and carefully restored the historic structure for its new use as a community museum. Tremendous thanks to the Maple Valley Historical Society for the restoration and ongoing stewardship of this historic general store, now accessible for future generations in Maple Valley. The Weiss Grocery Store was built in 1928 at the intersection of Vashon Highway Southwest and Southwest Bank Road at the center of Vashon Town. In 1890, Frank Gorsuch bought property at the intersection of two new county roads, one connecting to the center of the island, the other leading out to a steamboat landing. The general store he built at this crossroads gave rise to Vashon's commercial core. The Gorsuch store supplied essential provisions, and it quickly became an important gathering spot for the exchange of both goods and gossip. In 1913, Fred and Henry Weiss bought the store from Frank and operated the Weiss Brothers General Merchandise Store from 1913 to 1928. In 1928, Fred Weiss moved the store to a new brick building on the northeast corner of Bank Road and Vashon Highway. The design of the Weiss store emphasizes its prominent corner location and tall, open interior first floor space, which has housed a number of businesses over the years. Now known as Vashon Landing, this building helps tell the story of Vashon Island's commercial development and continues to contribute to the vitality of the island's downtown core. Special thanks to owner Brevni Mago for his stewardship and protection of this historic building on Vashon Island. The John D. Spellman Award for Preservation Partnership acknowledges the exceptional work that can occur when stewards of public properties, city officials, and forward-thinking developers partner on a large-scale rehabilitation project with the goal of reviving and reimagining the social value of a historic site. I am thrilled to present the 2021 John D. Spellman Award to Daniels Real Estate, the City of Kenmore, and the Washington State Parks and Recreation Commission for exemplary achievement in partnering to transform the 1931 St. Edward Seminary into the Lodge at St. Edward State Park. This stunning rehabilitation reopened this monumental building to the public and ensured its future in this remarkable setting in Kenmore. When I looked at this project originally, I knew it was something special because you're on Lake Washington, you're in this magnificent park, and yet you're only 25 minutes from downtown Seattle. 
in the 1920s, Bishop O'Day from the Archdiocese of Seattle was looking for a place to build a seminary by a stroke of God's will or magic or just good fortune. He ended up getting a inheritance, so he bought the land. St. Edward State Park is like iconic facility, public facility, and the seminary was always this kind of silent bystander. Demolition by neglect. That's what we were observing. This building was being demolished bit by bit by bit by our neglect. And so just to watch this deterioration over the years, was really distressing. What were we going to do? As time progressed, as different people came forward wanting to do something, I would get hopeful. When Kevin Daniels came and his group, it was really apparent they were going to do something. So the building that we inherited, while very run down in certain places and a lot of water damage. This building was built out of solid concrete, including the roof, to last a thousand years. What you see now is this uh, grand lodge with all of the fantastic uh, architectural pieces that were here from the original seminary uh, captured and maintained in this space. I had no idea that ultimately in my lifetime it would turn around and become something like it is now. I got to tour it at the worst. I got to tour it when it was completely stripped inside and I've got to stay in the facility since it was completed. It, it has been a, a wonderful experience to see it from beginning to end. Two things that I really love, one of them is Mother Nature and the other is what we can do to preserve history in a way that enhances all of ourselves today and prepares for the future. This is the spot where that happened. When people walk through and happen to look at this wall next to me, the Hall of History, they get transported back, remembering the people who came before. If I was to be fully honest, I did not envision what we ended up with. There was a lot of talented people that took a, a little teeny mustard seed of a idea and and blew it up into this magnificent um, project that we have today. That's just really enjoyable. And to know that you're leaving something behind that will be its own legacy, but also your legacy is a lot of fun too. The Shoreline Naval Hospital Chapel was designated as a City of Shoreline landmark for its association with the Seattle Naval Hospital during World War II, now known as the Fircrest Campus. Built in 1944, the Shoreline Naval Hospital Chapel was the first interdenominational chapel constructed at a naval hospital. The Naval Hospital Chapel is also significant as a distinctive example of Tudor Revival design, which was an architectural style used frequently for military buildings between 1900 and 1945. In anticipation of the arrival of wounded sailors from the Pacific Theater, the Navy constructed the Fircrest Naval Hospital in Shoreline in 1942. The hospital grew quickly, housing over 2,000 soldiers and 600 staff members at its peak in 1945. After World War II ended, the U.S. Navy's need for the Seattle Naval Hospital campus dwindled, and in 1947, the Secretary of the Navy ordered the closure of the Naval Hospital. It was immediately repurposed as the new Furland Sanatorium, which housed over 400 tuberculosis patients. 
In 1959, the Fircrest School moved onto the hospital grounds where it remains today, operated by the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services. Thanks to Shoreline Preservation Society for their tireless advocacy, as well as the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services and the Department of Natural Resources for their ongoing stewardship of this important historic resource in Shoreline. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this year's presentation of the John D. Spellman Preservation Awards. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all current and former Landmarks Commissioners for their service and dedication to this essential and often challenging work. I'd also like to acknowledge King County's amazing Historic Preservation Program staff, Todd Scott, Sarah Steen, and Phil Letourneau and thank them for all they do every day to identify and protect historic places and cultural artifacts throughout the county. Special thanks to Eric Keto with King County Television for working with us again this year to capture these stories and produce this wonderful virtual program. And finally, I'd like to thank all of this year's award winners for being passionate advocates for preservation and for all the time and effort they put into their projects and businesses. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Thanks. <laughs>